So, when I told Miles I wanted to give a presentation today, I knew I'd want to create some slides. So, I thought, I'll buy a $30 copy of Keynote. Well, as it turns out, system-wide slide management system is the Empowering People Strategic Plan Action Item number 17. So, we really need to unify our presentations because everyone's, everyone's making presentations, right? I mean, I'm not the only one creating slides in this organization. So, in order to protect the valuable relationship that I have with you, some of my most valued constituents, I, I really needed to just get on board with the enterprise track here. Now, with some of you, I have, may have multiple relationships. Miles, for example, we used to be co-workers, so I have an employee record for Miles. Miles is also in a band with me, so I have a band member record in my band management system. And, um, I don't know, he's, he's also in the bro management system, because look at that haircut. So, <clears throat> the key here is, I want to personalize these slides. So, I need to show you that I care by including some of your personal information in them. But the complicated thing is as we're merging data from the bro management system, the band management system, the employee management system, see some data about a person you trust more from one system than another depending on the stage that that person is in and the constituent life cycle. Because, see, I want to track my relationships with Miles from cradle to grave. Um, because uh, empowering people's strategic plan action item number four is building lifetime relationships. So, we thought about Keynote and PowerPoint um, because they're very widely used and you can create a slide deck pretty fast. But the problem is they don't allow us to, to do the kind of complex logic that we need to when importing data about our constituents. So, for example, what is Miles' first name? Well, some places it's, it's Miles Z Sterrett. Some places uh, it's just Miles ZS. Under some circumstances, it's all the same person, but we want to be careful which one of those salutations we're using under the circumstances. So, for a kind of informal presentation like this, we want to be sure we address him correctly, otherwise we could horribly, horribly, irrevocably damage our relationship with a potential donor. So, again, PowerPoint and Keynote, they don't, they don't really let us do that. Plus, Keynote's, what, $30? So 10,000 users, that's only $300,000. And you know what, man? If it didn't cost at least a million dollars, don't even, don't even talk to me about that crap. Okay, that's not real software. So, we decided to form a project team. Um, since some of our slides are going to contain technical data as well as functional data, we needed to have um, functional project managers from each of the four major business verticals. And then um, a project manager from the technical side, and then a project director above the project manager because, I don't know, Someone said we needed a project director as well as a project manager. So that's what we did. But see, these people only make um, roughly seventy-five dollars to $140,000 a piece. So they can't really make any decisions. So we need an implementation task force, a level above that, that leads, uh, meets slightly less frequently and um, pretty much just rubber stamps the decisions at the lower uh, project team makes. So on the implementation task force, the minimum salary is about $175,000, and there's roughly twice as many of them. And the meetings last approximately forever apiece. Um, but then, you know, the executives get kind of jealous of the implementation task force. Implementation task force, by the way, never go anywhere near an implementation. So don't let the name fool you. It just sounds cool. So we really need an executive board above that. Slightly fewer people, but a min minimum of $290,000 salary apiece. And then they can make wide sweeping um, decisions for us. So, <clears throat> Keynote and, and PowerPoint were out. 
So we narrowed it down to two fine pieces of presentation management software. Um, one of which was a fairly modern looking web app with some nice Ajaxy stuff and, and um, a nice web 2.0-ish interface. Um, but it only had, uh, a, it had a limit of only 10,000 transition animations per slideshow. That could be a problem. This thing's got to scale. And the other one was a VB6 desktop app. Um, but you see, the thing is, it's got a splash screen that's got a picture of about a dozen ethnically diverse people wearing suits, carrying briefcases, and talking on cell phones. So, business, right? And then once the splash screen goes away, you're presented with a single window with no less than eight different scroll bars. So, again, business. So we've got three horizontal scroll bars and five vertical scroll bars. And on the vertical scroll bars, at the top, you've got a button with an up arrow, right? But here's the cool thing. Above that, there's another button that has two up arrows. <laughs> yeah. So I, you can see which one wins. So we purchased that for, you know, low seven figures plus professional service engagements, of course. We need some highly paid consultants to come in and, well, not implement, because this is an enterprise system. We can't let a vendor actually touch anything. So below the project team, we need some system managers, who are not technical, mind you. Um, and then we need some local, uh, local implementation coordinators. They don't do the actual work either. But uh, somebody eventually does is the idea. But they're, they're, yeah. it's, it's, we're, we're not real big on execution. Just, you know, we like to talk about things. So <clears throat> we made the purchasing decision for this fine VB6 app, spent a few million dollars getting it implemented, and then it comes time to actually create our slides, right? Well, then the, the issue comes up. We need a preference management protocol. So a preference management protocol, you see, some of you may want the slides on paper during the presentation. Some of them might want me to mail them to you afterward. Some of, them, some of you might want the slides read to you over the phone. And others of you might just want it on the screen. And the thing is, if you've already expressed those preferences to us and we've recorded that, if we don't enforce those preferences, if we accidentally uh, hand you a printout when you wanted it read to you over the phone, we are screwed and you are never going to give us money again. So we can't go live with this until we have this preference management protocol in place. So some decisions have to be made. We need to make a portal where you can um, self-select some of these preferences and you can opt out entirely from the slides if you choose. But we don't want to use negative phrases like opt out or unsubscribe. That sends the wrong message. We want to encourage further engagement. So we need to use positive language like stay connected your way. So <clears throat> the project team, as it is wont to do, came up with a recommendation after um, several weekly meetings of three hours apiece. And then we made a recommendation to the implementation task force who, uh, who discussed this, this footer that leads you to the preference management uh, system, the language in the footer. We discussed it for two hours, couldn't reach a decision, so we delayed it till next month. And then we decided, ah uh, yes, stay connected your way is positive, and people are totally going to know that that's what you click if you want to unsubscribe, right? So. We came up with that, but then it's a matter of implementing this thing. You could want slides from every department, from every research center. And this is a large organization, folks. And you may want it about sports. You may want slides about uh, volunteer opportunities. So we need to come up with all the different dimensions that you could possibly want. And the difficult thing is see some wings of the organization, um, one wing in particular has over 200 uh, four-letter codes 
that uh, signify these preferences that have already been recorded. For example, I only want things via mail on the days when I'm washing my cat, but I want phone calls the rest of the time, except during the winter months when I'm uh, in Florida, and then, yeah, you know how it is. Very common stuff. So, if we ever make an error there, again, end of the world. If I send him something to, to Miles up, up where he lives now, when he really wanted something to Miles ZS at his office, oh my gosh, relationship ruined. So, we have to be able to systematically enforce all of these codes before we can put together a slideshow. Because, man, it would just be disaster otherwise. So, we determined that we wouldn't be able to have this preference management um, probably for a good two years. But, the presentation was in two weeks. So, we made the decision to go ahead and put the slides together and then just not release them. Because, well, we'd already set the deadline and it's very important to show progress. So we spent a couple 80 hours a week putting together the slides for tonight's presentation. But if I showed them to you and failed to honor your preferences, we'd, it would just, the whole thing would just be ruined. So that's what we did. So if I seem a little tired, it's because I've been pulling 80-hour uh, weeks putting together the slideshow that I'm not allowed to show you. But the good news is your preferences have been honored. <laughs>